What is going on Amazon sellers or hopefully soon to be Amazon sellers. My name is Bo Crable and in this video, I will be discussing the difference between having a scarce and abundant mindset and how it is very crucial for your Amazon business. Now, the reason why this video is very important is because the business model I'm in is very, very simple. If you have no idea what I do and how I make money on Amazon, I buy name brand products in bulk. So products like Apple, Sony, Samsung, Nature Made, Hasbro, Mattel, products that you've heard of before, even things like these Expo markers, and I sell them for hire on Amazon. And that is it. That's all I do. Okay, so I'm not creating my own products, I'm not private labeling, I'm not drop shipping, I'm not hustling in retail stores, I'm not doing arbitrage. It's a very simple thing, I just gotta buy low and sell higher. So you would think, okay, if I just buy $1,000 of inventory and I see that has a 30% ROI, that $1,000 is gonna get turned into $1,300 and I just reinvest. Which for the most part, yes, it's that simple. That's how it is for my business. But what I have noticed over the past years, coaching people and working with people and seeing people in YouTube comments and Facebook groups, is that people tend to make mistakes and go off their emotions um, because of their mindset. And to kind of give you an example for this, I was listening to an audiobook uh, by Tony Robbins today by Unshakable when I was working out, and he was talking something very similar to this about how investing into the stock market and what he does and the model that he does with his index funds are very, very simple. But for the average person listening to the book that I was listening to in Unshakable, he realized that people are humans and people have characteristics where they make mistakes, right? And, and he t started talking a little bit about a scarce mindset versus an abundant mindset. And that's the reason for me making this video today, right? So just to recap that little introduction, in an ideal world, what would happen is you buy inventory, right? You buy some products from a supplier and let's say you buy a thousand units or let's say you, you're starting small when your first time you get going you buy 100 units of some product right and then you see that it makes a 30 percent roi in 30 days and then at the end of 30 days it makes a 30 percent roi it makes the money the prices stay exactly the same there's no more sellers get added to it and everything is exactly what you thought that's an ideal situation and a lot of times that does happen prices on amazon go up as much as they go down if you're doing it correctly and the best sellers are going to get that most of the times where those ideal situations happen. But we don't live in an ideal world and things will go other ways. More sellers get added to the listing. Uh, prices will go down. And the best sellers will learn how to prevent those problems to occur and also understand how to adapt. Just like when Tony Robbins was talking about his Unshakable book that I was listening to this morning, he said the best investors, the money makers, will understand how to prevent themselves to markets crashing and how to adapt when they do crash. So for me, when prices go down or more sellers get added to it, I'll know how to prevent myself for the future and how to adapt. And that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video. So now what I wanna talk about is a few traits and downsides of having a scarce mindset instead of having a, an abundance mindset, right? So a few traits um, I see people having a scarce mindset is they look at cost of things. And that's, that's not talking about just your Amazon business, okay? So right here, I'm kind of going back and forth between just like not like being an Amazon seller, just life and being an Amazon seller. So if you're always looking at cost of things instead of the value of it, for sure, scarce mindset. Uh, going off emotions, right? You could do that in your Amazon business. You maybe, you think that, oh, I really love dolls or I really love action figures or really love books or really love electronics or think I know a lot about one certain thing so I'm gonna sell that certain product okay um, goes for the MOQ all the time 100% if someone's always looking to if you're always if you find yourself always asking uh, suppliers questions what's the MOQ or can I have a lower MOQ definitely a scarce mindset always going for really high margins is also going to be a scarce mindset as well why People who say, oh, I'm gonna start out at 100% ROI, 150% ROI, 200% ROI, and say, probably by time I'll have enough room for it to go down to protect themselves, that's not good at all. I see that mistake happen so many times from people, is that they'll say, okay, I'm only gonna go for products that have over 80% ROI because then I have enough room for it to go down. And I'm gonna tell you that does not work at all. And now I wanna explain this. So if you're always looking at cost of things, let me explain how this could be bad. Right? Maybe you find yourself, you're going shopping for refrigerators and you try to go buy the cheapest refrigerator possible. You go on Craigslist and find one for $100, 
right? You might be saving money, but then maybe it starts to break down in a couple months. It's really bad value and you have to go change it all the time. And maybe over a five year span, that $100 refrigerator ended up costing you $6,000 and then you have to go throw it away at the end of it. Or maybe you look at a nicer refrigerator and look at the value of things where it's maybe $6,000, the refrigerator, um, a sub-zero refrigerator, and doesn't have any issues and you never have to replace it. And maybe after the end of 10 years, you're able to go sell for $5,000 back, right? So I'd say people with an abundant mindset, wealthier people tend to have that mindset and look at the value of things, right? But now in regards to your Amazon business, if you're always looking at, let's say, the cost of products or trying to see how I can only sell products that are maybe $2 or $1 and you don't go for products that maybe cost you $50 a unit, $100 a unit, you could be missing out so many products because a lot of people, um, I tell people all the time that I do sell a lot of high ticket items and I think high ticket items are great to go for. And they say, oh, that's really bad because you're putting so much risk, right? If you buy an Xbox console for $190, people look, oh man, if I just get one bad return or this or this and that, I'm gonna be out $190, right? So that could really hurt you because I know I make a lot of money with high-end products, printers that are costing $200. Uh, I've sold generators before for $500. So that right there. Um, going off emotions. So one big thing I want to talk about is about preventing and adapting is regards to price changes. So on Amazon, if you're selling name brand products, there's the opportunity where other sellers could be on the listing. All right. So that means people can raise the price, lower the price. Now in an ideal situation, if the sellers knew what they were doing, they wouldn't lower or raise the price because how the buy box works on Amazon, all the sellers that are selling new, selling FBA, if the sellers are at the same exact price, then they're going to share their sales. If someone goes lower, then he's going to get all the sales, but then people are just going to match them. So it really doesn't make sense to lower prices on Amazon, but there's idiots out there. So people will lower prices. Now, ways to prevent yourself on that happening, right? Instead of just going off your emotions, because if you're just going off your emotions, having a scarce mindset, you're just going to try to lower your price and just cut your loss and sell it as fast as possible. And then you're going to feel discouraged, right? But if you have maybe an abundant mindset and you're thinking on how you can prevent it, you could beforehand could have understood research on Amazon, uh, looking at Keepa graphs, looking, oh, maybe three months ago, wow, that product was down below this price. It's probably going to go back down to there and just thinking like that. And that's kind of what I really teach inside my Amazon course, kind of looking at the history of products. So if you want to check out more about that, feel free to do so. Um, but now I want to talk about going off of MOQ. So going always for the MOQ isn't always a bad idea. Right, I do believe in testing out your products. So let's say you get connected with a supplier that they have this unlimited amount of inventory off some expo markers, all right? And you check the results by doing your research, right? You learn your product research, however, and you find out you could probably sell 100 a month. And you realize that the MOQ is like 50. It probably would not be a bad idea to start with an MOQ of 50 and see how fast they actually sell. That's great. But if you're always, if you find that you find some products that are selling 2,000 units per month and the MOQ is maybe 1,000 units and you think, oh, 1,000 units is way too much for me, and you try to go to this bar, it can have a lower MOQ, and you're just always trying to go for the lowest amount of possible, that could actually really hurt you. And how it could hurt you is, let's say, you're working with a supplier that sells to three other Amazon sellers, and they have a opportunity buy where maybe there's 500 uh, units that they have MOQ is called 300 right so you have to buy at least 300 of them and you say okay I'm just gonna buy 300 but you would have maybe you found out beforehand that it sells 800 times per month so easily if you would have bought all 500 you would probably get a better deal and you would own all the inventory and sell out in a month's time right however you bought 300 and you bought the 300 you put them in your store and realize someone else bought the other 200 and then now you're dealing with some other person who bought the other 200 and now maybe that person lowers it because he wants to sell it as fast as possible and you're now you're in a whole ordeal where then you go off your emotions, the price goes down, you start losing money on that product. First, if you had an abundant mindset, you bought all 500 of them because you were confident, so first you gotta become confident in your product research and you saw them, probably were able to negotiate with the supplier because you bought all 500 and got a better deal and sold out in less than 30 days and made your uh, margins on that. Does that make sense? So now what I want to talk about is going for higher margins. Now, this is a very, I would say, complex, tricky discussion, but what I've noticed, a correlation between people who always kind of put standards on themselves, saying that I will only go for products 
and have a 50% margin or 50% ROI because I want to give myself some room to go lower. If you're saying to yourself, I want to give myself some room to go lower, that's a scarce mindset and you're going to run into issues for that. Because let's say you are a new seller and typically if someone has a scarce mindset, I'm sorry, but you're a new seller. Um, and if you only go for products that have a 50% ROI, you're new to that supplier. And what that probably means is that somebody else at a 50% ROI, someone else probably has a better margin on that. Because if you're new to them, that supplier is probably giving someone else a better deal or someone bought from somewhere else, right? Compared to going for, I would say, products that maybe if you see them have a 10% say, and you think that's low, but you gotta keep in mind that you're new with that supplier and they probably wanna bait you with those 10% uh, ROI products to build trust and then you later on get better products, right? So if you go for lower or those really high margins, typically you're gonna find yourself that someone else has even higher and then they're gonna undercut prices and you're gonna only run into issues, right? I'm gonna talk about the flip side of that and what I look for in products in the next little slide going on here. So now what I wanna talk about is having an abundant mindset and how it actually can really, really help you in your Amazon business versus the people who have a scarce mindset. Because at the end of the day, you just need to know that much more information than everyone else. And keep in mind that a lot of people are going to have a scarce mindset. So if you can have an abundant mindset, you're gonna have an advantage on that. So let's get into this right now. So having an abundant mindset, right? would be looking at the value of things. So if we go back to the refrigerator example, let's say you look at a refrigerator that has, that's, you look at just the value of it, all right? So you think, okay, how much will I be able to sell this back for in whatever amount of years? How long will this last me? Will this have to have a bunch of maintaining costs? And that goes for everything, right? When you're buying a house, when you're buying shoes, buying clothes. I know the book I read uh, by Kevin O'Leary, he had a book where he's talking about, and a little story of it was talking about his, I think, sister. And he said his sister, when she goes shopping, she barely buys anything, but when she does, she will look at things that she knows she can actually make for a profit. So there's one time she bought like a $1,200 blazer jacket, and like five years later, she sold it for like 1500 after wearing it all the time, okay? And in regards to your Amazon business, if you look at the value of suppliers or products or deals with some suppliers, maybe you look at a supplier that you have to spend $10,000 with them Right, you would say, "Oh, wow, they're they're too expensive for me." Or if you look at the value from them, wow, if I can work with a supplier that has this MOQ because they have all these types of products, that could be really great for my business. And then you want to think about solutions on how you can get to that point. Does that make sense? Going off the numbers, uh, for me, I have a very straightforward mindset when I look at things. I just look at the numbers and look at the data. So when I'm looking for products on Amazon, I'm not looking uh, on the cost, on how much I can make. I'm looking on the long-term growth of it. I'm looking on the consistency. So I'm not gonna wanna make, I wanna make the least amount of risk as possible. So I don't wanna go for products where last month it was selling for half the price or that in last October it, was selling, it wasn't selling at all, right? So I'm gonna look at consistent products and look at the value of them off that and just looking off the numbers, looking off the data. So now I want to talk about something that's going to be very important and probably going to give you a very good example of having an abundant mindset versus scarce mindset. So for me, when I'm selling on Amazon, I believe anything above 10% is worth my time, worth my money, worth my investment, right? So when I look at products, if it has a 10% ROI, I'm probably going to go for it. If I can sell it under 30 days or so and faster is better, right? And that's what I go for, 10% above. But ironically, 10% is not my average. And it's not lower than 10%, it's actually over 20%. So me, I'm going for products, anything that's above 10%, I get into my store and I sell it, right? However, according to the inventory labs, the accounting software I use, my ROI is greater than 20%. So if you're looking, let's say, working with suppliers, and you're looking for things that just make money and it's worth your time, worth your value, you're gonna find yourself finding more products you're gonna find yourself to be in a better situation to build trust with the supplier. So then once you're putting yourself in a better situation to build trust with the supplier, you're gonna find that you're gonna get access to more products, get access to better deals, and you're gonna to start to see your business grow. Versus if you had that scarce mindset where you're saying, hey supplier, I want to only find products that have this ROI and this, 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 and that. Then you say, okay, cool. They're not gonna really care about that and you're never gonna build trust with that supplier and never going to grow. But with an abundant mindset, you're thinking oppositely 
and you're able to go grow that supplier, grow with other people, and watch your business grow. So now, uh, we're close to the end of the video, and I want to talk about some solutions on fixing to having an abundant mindset versus a scare mindset. Right, so the first thing is just understanding, do you have a scarce mindset? If we go back to the slides where I'm talking about on if you're always looking at cost, always looking at MOQ, seeing you have high margins, understand that's hurting you. That's what I want to accomplish in this video, to think to yourself, do you have a scarce mindset? That's the first thing. And the second thing is you need to think of solutions, right? And how to work to there. Obviously you can think of, okay, I just need to start looking at value, I need to look at the numbers and change those things. Right, now with me, I wouldn't say I'm a psychologist or I can really be the best knowledge to you with that, um, but one book that I have read is actually by uh, Grant Cardone, like the 10X Rule, and he talks about that a bit in his book. And or there's also an audio version of it. So if you want to actually like kind of change your mindset on that, I would highly recommend that book. And if you want to check out that book, I'll actually have a link down below and that definitely really helped me with it. Because I noticed um, I definitely had a scarce mindset kind of growing up a little bit. And I think most people do kind of being employees taught by their parents. And I would say probably about 15, 16 months ago, I started to have more of an abundant mindset and really start to see my e-commerce business really grow from that. And it's a very important topic. So definitely if you want to learn more about that, and want to learn how I learned from it, definitely check out that book, read it, and go from there. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to put any questions down below. If you have a scarce mindset, hopefully you're switching over to the abundant mindset, and make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, listen to my podcast, and have a great day. Mm.